Okay, here we go. <clears throat> okay, so let's continue. Um, so we looked at um, verse 12, like Paul's testifying and he's saying that he did not receive this gospel from human human training or no man taught him, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. So as the Holy Spirit revealed uh, who the true Jesus Christ was and uh, the fact that Jesus is the Messiah and uh, Jesus is the Christ. So through that revelation, he got the gospel. Uh, he received this gospel. Okay, So so that is what it says. It, it, it did not come. Okay. So verse 13 talks about his former conduct, his uh, how he was, um, uh, you know, in Judaism. He persecuted the church. He tried to destroy the church. Verse 14, he says, you know, and I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my father. So he says, this was my background. Okay. So this is the place from which, uh, you know, this is how I, it was for me. And I began to persecute the church, wanting to destroy the church, and so on. I And I, I advanced in Judaism. Uh, so how did he advance in Judaism? Either in the knowledge, understanding of it, um, you know, maybe teaching of it, uh, and, and so on. So he, he would know the scriptures by heart. As uh, or at least the the Old Testament, the Pentateuch, you know, the book, five books, uh, know you know to recite uh, them by heart. Uh, as was the training of the Pharisees, so uh, all this uh, was there, and he he was he excelled at it more than his contemporaries. Okay, now it's important for us to understand that because now he's addressing the same issue of the law. And how people were going back to the law, okay? And uh, so he's he's saying, you know, I'm I marvel that you guys are going back to the law, right? So he's actually addressing the people, and he's saying, you know, this is the background I came from. You know it. You know, I was I was very advanced in you know in the teachings of Judaism. Okay, I persecuted the church. Verse 15, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood. So he's saying, you know, and it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb, the one who uh, you know, the one who created me, the one who, um, you know, made sure that, uh, you know, it is it is actually a, uh, an expression uh, which means to sanctify, to prepare, uh, you know, to who actually called me, you know, from my mother's womb, right? So he's saying that, uh, and this was a commonly used expression for for the call of God. Right to on a person's life, so you separated me from my mother's womb. He separated me. Uh, he he called me to this um, to this apostleship. Right. So what what happened? He called me through his grace to reveal his son in me. You know, the the revelation of the son he received in uh, in his spirit. Right. So he uh, he received this. He received this revelation. He received this gospel. Uh, he received the revelation of of the Lord Jesus in his spirit. He revealed his son in me that I might preach him among the Gentiles, among the non-Jewish people. So this is the purpose of God. This is the plan of God that he uh, he called me. He revealed. He brought this revelation to me, uh, and I received this revelation in me in my spirit. Immediately, I did not confer with flesh and blood. He said, "He says I did not uh, immediately consult with uh, flesh and blood. No, I received this in my spirit. I did not uh, confer, which means I did not. Uh, in addition to this, um, you know, I did not consult. I did not, uh, you know, I did not discuss it uh, with anyone else. Right? Uh, I did not confer. I did not have any discussion." others 
and verse 17 nor did i go up to jerusalem to those who were apostles before me okay nor did i uh, go to jerusalem or consult or meet with any of the apostles but i went to arabia and returned again to damascus okay so this is what he says so um, you 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 know you know the, he actually escaped from damascus went to syria and so on and then he says no he returned again to uh, damascus okay verse 18 okay let's read verse 18 till the end of the chapter then after three years i went up to jerusalem to see peter remained with him 15 days but i saw none of the other apostles except james the lord's brother now concerning the things which i write to you indeed before god i do not lie afterward i went into the regions of syria and cilicia and I was unknown by face to the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they were hearing only, he who formerly persecute, persecuted us, now preaches the faith which he once tried to destroy, and they glorified God in me. Okay. So, so what happened was he did not meet with people, he did not consult with people, uh, they did not teach him anything, hey, this is how you need to live as a believer, this is how you, you know, uh, this is how the law the, nothing like he received the revelation he did not confer he did not consult but he went about preaching okay he he of course had this understanding of old testament scriptures and and somehow this revelation you know just made that connection so he from the scriptures he was pointing out that jesus is the son of god so he went about teaching that he went about you know um, to synagogues uh, and so on now uh, he, he says you know after three years, he went to Jerusalem to see Peter. Okay, it was after three years that, that he went and he met with Peter. And he stayed with him for about two weeks. Now, maybe they discuss certain things. We do not know. He doesn't mention the other apostles except James. So James and Peter, uh, uh, these two people he met. And uh, probably he shared his testimony with them. Uh, maybe they shared, you know, their testimony of walking with the Lord. Uh, something would have happened, right? Um, so this is what happened. So and then verse nine, first verse twenty, he says, "Now concerning the things which I write to you, indeed before God I do not lie." Now all these things that I'm, you know, I'm I'm writing to you about, I'm mentioning, um, it is the truth. Okay, there's there's no need for me to lie. I, and in fact, before God, I do not lie. Um, verse 21 after i went into the afterward i went into the regions of syria and cilicia i was unknown by face to the churches of judea which were in christ right now these were they were believers in all these regions they were congregations people get gathering together as churches now he was unknown by face but they in a sense they had not met him uh, because he did not go there he did not visit there they did not met him but they heard about him Right? Because he was such a violent persecutor of the faith that they heard about him. And when he began to follow Christ, that also, you know, the news spread. And it says that uh, they were hearing, this is what they were hearing. He who formerly persecuted us, persecuted us, now preaches the faith which he once tried to destroy. Now that was a common, you know, testimony that was spreading in all these churches that, you know, this, this guy... He persecuted us. He tried to destroy the faith, but now he's preaching the very thing that he tried to destroy. Okay, and they glorified God in me. So they they gave thanks to God. They glorified God, saying, "God, you know, you changed this person. Um, so we, we want to give you the praise. We want to give you the glory." Okay, so all this was happening. Right? Uh, now, now let's move on to chapter two. Okay, then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, and also took up. So I also took Titus with me, and I went up by revelation and communicated to them the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to those who were of reputation, lest by any means I might run or had run in vain. Yet not even Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And this occurred because of false brethren secretly brought in who came in by stealth 
to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into bondage to whom we did not yield submission even for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you okay let's stop there so th after three years after becoming a believer he goes to Jerusalem now after 14 years right so it's total of about 17 years he went up again to Jerusalem now this time he goes with Barnabas and also with Titus okay. and he meets with those um, uh, he says who are of reputation he meets with some of the um, apostles and what does he do he communicates to them he shares with them his the revelation that he received okay so he says I communicated to them the gospel which I preach privately to those of reputation so he's meeting with them and sharing you know this is what i have been preaching and the reason the why does he do that so he wants to check like he wants to check himself and he's saying lest by any means i might run or had run in vain okay so he's he's just checking now, this is after 17 years, he has actually preached, you know, you just think about it, 17 years, right? So uh, he has actually been preaching about Christ, and then he meets, uh, he goes to Jerusalem, he meets with uh, some of the apostles, and he he tells them, you know, he, he kind of humbles himself, and he says, okay, this is the message that I'm preaching, this is the gospel that I am preaching. Okay. And the reason for that is he's checking, you know, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to have ministered in vain. Okay. He says, I want, I don't want to or live my life in, if by any means I had run, you know, meaning the way he conducted his life, uh, whatever he did through his life and ministry, uh, you know, that is, uh, the Bible talks about walking and running, you know, referring to that, the way we live our life, the way we go about, um, you know, uh, living our lives. So, um, so it, this is a chapter two and verse one, right? Uh, sorry, verse um, two. Lest by uh, any means that I had run, I should run, or I had run in vain. Okay, so. Or he also talks about, you know, if I had lived my life in a, like a hasty, in a hasty manner, right? I don't, I don't want to have done that. Um, so the other thing about run also, Paul uses that, right? You know, you know run the race um, or one who prepares for a race. All the other talks about the athlete and so on. So, so he's, uh, you know, in a race, of course, you are, training yourself you're living in a certain way and you're also putting in effort okay so the, this running um requires effort right? when you look at it uh, you know just look if you look at running it, uh, or maybe you're competing as an athlete it requires effort so so also you know paul is drawing that parallel and he's saying okay I'm putting in so much of effort and uh, and obviously He's being persecuted for that effort. He's living in danger because of that effort um, that he's putting in. Right? All that effort, all that work, all that exertion. Uh, you know. So he's saying, no, I don't want to have done that to be a waste. Right? All that. I don't want that to be a waste. I don't want what's happening in future. If I'm going to put in the same kind of effort, same kind of methods and the message, I don't want that to be a waste. Lest by any means I might run or had run in vain. So I'm run in vain. I don't want that to be. Um, so he is shared that with this intention. I don't want it to be a waste. I don't want to, my life to be a waste or I, I just want to check. But he says, even Titus, who was Greek, right, the non-Jew, he was not compelled by these leaders, by these apostles, by these leaders, to be circumcised. He was not compelled by them. Okay. So he's talking about that issue right, of circumcision. So he's kind of uh, you know, building up 
the whole thing the the other gospel which the people were sharing it definitely involved you know this whole issue of circumcision so he's saying you know when i when titus was there and when i brought this revelation the gospel that i preached and how i ministered and everything to the to the apostles to those who were of reputation he says uh, who seemed to be leaders right now they did not compel titus to be circumcised okay these were the people who walked with jesus now they did not ask him and they did not tell him anything they did not compel him to be circumcised verse 4 and this occurred what occurred this whole thing about circumcision this compelling to be circumcised this occurred because of false brethren okay so now these these were brethren in the sense they you know they they were fellowshipping and they calling themselves as believers but they were false okay so he's saying they were false brethren secretly brought in you know which means that they came in secret uh who came in by stealth to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into bondage so they came in by stealth meaning they you know it's like without uh causing attention they came in stealthily they did they did not announce their real motive okay they did not announce openly what they what they wanted to do what their agenda was what their plan was so they came in stealthily okay pretending to be believers pretending to be followers of Christ okay they came in stealthily to spy out our liberty okay to see okay what is this what is their teaching how are they living what is the freedom right what are they not following about the law so he's saying to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus so they came in you know stealthily it was not with clear motives it was not with uh, you know uh, with honest uh, motives they did not announce they did not tell us clearly why they were there they pretended to be believers so they were false brethren they came to see you know the kind of freedom that we have in Christ but they wanted to bring us into bondage it says that they might bring us into bondage okay so that was their real intention to uh, to to have fellowship with us to be among us that was their real intention okay verse 5 to whom we did not yield a submission even for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you okay so this thing happened so they came in they brought this uh you know this kind of a message um about circumcision possibly right but to that we did not yield you know we it means that the opposite of yielding is resisting right so we did not yield we did not say okay okay we receive your message no we resisted so he says we did not yield to submission even for to uh, submit yield submission even for an hour the reason is we wanted the truth to continue okay we did not want the truth to be mixed with lies we wanted the truth to continue so continue with you okay um verse 6 but from those who seemed to be something whatever they were it um it makes a difference to me god shows sorry let me just read that again verse 6 but from those who seem to be something whatever they were it makes no difference to me god shows personal favoritism to no man for those who seemed to be something added nothing to me but on the contrary when they saw that the gospel for the uncircumcised had been committed to me as the gospel for the circumcised was to peter um and then you know he goes on to say what they did right okay um but from those who seemed to be something whatever they were it makes no difference to me god shows personal favoritism to no man so he's is addressing those who seemed to be of prominence in the church right so he's obviously talking about you know he, he, earlier he talks about how he shared what he was doing with those of reputation 
right? So, who seemed to be something in the church in Jerusalem. So he's saying, you know, uh, see, who seems to be something of, who seem to be people of reputation, because, you know, probably they were ministering and they knew, people knew them. Um, they were well known by people, obviously. So he said, uh, you know, whatever they were, it makes a difference to me, actually, because God shows personal favoritism to no one. Okay. Now I'm saying that they were of reputation, but in God's eyes, he does not, you know, he does not see it that way. Right? There's no personal favoritism. So it's just it's a kind of a disclaimer that Paul is mentioning here, saying, you know, it 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 makes no difference to me. Uh, God does not show any personal favoritism. But anyway, for those who seemed to be something added nothing to me. Okay. So they did not add anything more. I came, I spoke to them, I shared what I was sharing. And uh, with the intention of wanting to continue in the proper manner. But they added nothing to me. Okay, they, they seem to be nothing. They added nothing. They, they, they did not place any other weight. They added, you know, nothing else. Um, uh, one second. They added nothing to me. Uh, no other, no nothing, no other tasks, nothing else to be done, uh, nothing, nothing at all. And he says, verse 7, For on the contrary, when they saw that the gospel for the uncircumcised had been committed to me. It was the gospel, the message, it was for the whole world, but God had uniquely called Paul to take this message to the non-Jewish world or the non or the non-Jewish people. Right? So he, he says that um, when they saw that the gospel for the uncircumcised had been committed to me, God had, God had called him as an apostle to go and share the gospel to the non-Jewish people. Um as the gospel for the circumcised was to Peter. So, so they clearly, you know, they knew that as Peter was called to take the gospel to the Jewish people, so also they saw that the gospel was, you know, Paul was called to take the gospel to the non-Jewish people. Now, again, you know, it, it's, you see the grace of God, you see the plan of God, so that, you know, um, uh, you know, a person who is a learned man uh, in the Jewish um, customs and traditions, you know, he's taken to a non-Jewish, you know, uh, audience. And whereas a person who was uh, a businessman in terms of fishing, right, uh, Peter, and uh, and he is taken to the Jewish people with the gospel, right? The plan of God. Uh, so unlike the plan of man, right? So anyway, so it says, uh, this is what they saw that, they saw, they understood. Uh, verse 8, for he who, effect, he who worked effectively in Peter for the apostleship to the circumcised also worked effectively in me towards the Gentiles. Okay, so the Lord who worked effectively in Peter the same Lord worked effectively in me as well in taking the gospel to the uh, to the um, uh, to the Gentiles. Right. So, so the the word used there effectively, you know, energeo, which means that um, full of power, you know, to to operate to operate well, to full of to be power, um, to be effective. Um, Effect uh, eff uh, to be fervent, etc. To be mighty, to be fervent, um, to be powerful. Right. So he's saying the same Lord worked in Peter in this manner: mighty, uh, powerful, uh, effective in ministry, uh, in carrying out the ministry. The same Lord did for me as well. Okay, so that I might take the message to the Gentiles. Uh, verse nine. 
And when James, Cephas, and John, so Cephas is Peter, so when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that had been given to me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. They desired only that we should remember the poor, the very thing which I also was eager to do. Okay, so so what is um, uh, what what do we what do we see here? So we see first of all we see that okay the same Lord who worked in Peter is working in him. So they they did not add anything to him. They did not say okay now you need to do this. You need to keep the law. You need to do the, do these five things. They did not do anything like that. Uh, they did not even compel. Titus, who was a Greek to be circumcised, who was part of their team, who was traveling with them, so they did not do that. Uh, and here we see that uh, he, to he mentions Peter, James, and John, who seemed to be pillars, like they were leaders in the church in Jerusalem. Like they were men of reputation. Um, they had walked with the Lord. Um, uh, they walked alongside uh, the Lord watched uh, everything. They ministered, in fact, when the Lord sent them out. So they were pillars in the church in Jerusalem. So when they, when he said that when they, they perceived the grace, okay, they perceived the grace. Um, so which means that uh, um, they, you know, they sensed, they sensed the grace of God that was upon him, you know, to to know through the spiritual senses. Like when you say perceived, it means through their senses they they got this understanding. So they perceived the kind of grace that had been given to me. Okay, it's the same grace that he wished upon the Galatians. Right, he greeted the Galatians with. They saw the grace. Um, the so, which means that this is enabling of God, right? It's an enabling of God to minister among the Gentiles. This this enablement, this divine enablement. Okay, so, they saw the grace which was freely given, given from God. He's the source. What did they do? They gave Barnabas and, him, and Paul the right hand of fellowship. So, they... Uh, so the right hand of fellowship, meaning that uh, uh, it was the uh, uh, you know they they commended him, they approved of uh, of what he did. Okay, so um, a place of honor, a place of authority. Uh, so that is all that, right? So figuratively, that what it, that's what it means: the right hand of fellowship, meaning that hey, we are part part of this right? fellowship meaning you know we are sharing in this we are partners in this we are one in this so uh, giving their right hand would mean that you know they are cooperating they approved of it and uh, they honored it and they said you know this is what they did so gave the right hand of fellowship that we should go to the Gentiles and that they would go to the uncircumcised um uh sorry they did they would go to the jewish people and you know which is the circumcised people right they desired only that we should also remember the we should remember the poor the very thing which i also was eager to do so they so the only thing that they said was okay uh we want you to remember the poor uh, and uh, so paul says yes i was also uh, of the same opinion i also wanted to do the same thing now, when Peter had come to Antioch, okay, um, so that's still verse 10. Okay, so so from chapter 1 and chapter 2, verse 10, we see that Paul is slowly building up um, the case for uh, what he's going to address, right, in, in, in several uh, past, uh, several verses later. Okay, so, so how he received the gospel? And what he did after that, you know, three years, uh, he was uh, he went to Jerusalem after three years, then spent some time with Peter, then I went again after uh, 14 years, uh, then met with people, shared with them and all that. And then he goes on to say, they did not say anything about the law. 
right? They did not add anything to my life. Um, now there was Titus. Now we are talking about these people who are the apostles. Now they did not compel him to be circumcised. Okay, all that. Then he goes on to talk about an incident which happened in Antioch. Okay, okay. Uh, so this is Antioch in Syria where Paul was ministering. Barnabas was also there. So he's saying now when Peter had come to Antioch. Okay, let's read through that inc incident. Um, verse 11 onwards. Now, when Peter had come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed. For before certain men came from James, he would eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision. And the rest of the Jews also played the hypocrite with him. So that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, If you, being a Jew, live in the manner of Gentiles and not as the Jews, why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Christ Jesus, even when we have believed in Christ Jesus, that we might be justified by faith in Christ Jesus, and not by works of the law, for by works of the law no flesh shall be justified. Okay. But if... While we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Okay, some so some very important things about grace, about law, uh, that Paul uh, you know t testifies here, and also about an incident which happened in Antioch. So what happened in Antioch? Peter was there, and Paul says, "I withstood him." You know, I had to confront this problem. So you know, Paul was a very bold man, right? Um, so he, even though he had come to Christ, he had come, he become a believer much after. All the apostles, you know, they were already following Christ. Uh, he had become, so he was not, you know, overawed by, you know, who the apostles were, right? Because he says, no, uh, God does not uh, show any personal favoritism, right? So even though they were men of reputation, people knew them as the apostles who walked with Jesus. Um, well, God does not actually show any favoritism. So when one of the apostles did something uh, which was uh, which was not right in the eyes of God, so Paul confronted. So he confronted Peter. Right? Confront meaning like he addressed. He told them, told him to his face that what he was doing was not correct. Okay. So it says that uh, I withstood him, and he was to be blamed. So what was the mistake? So some uh, people, some believers had come from uh, from James, um, who knew James. Now, when before they came, he would eat with the Gentiles. Now, Antioch was a Gentile church, right? He was non-Jewish. Uh, we're talking about Antioch in Syria. So Jews, I'm sure Jews would have been there, but but a lot of non-Jewish people, Gentiles, um, where had come to know the Lord. So they were all there. So now, before these men would come, Peter was behaving differently. Like he would be with the Gentiles, fellowship with them, eat with them, etc. 
right? Because uh, according to the Jewish law, you're not supposed to, you know, fellowship with non-Jewish people in that manner, right? Eat to them and, and so on. Now here, when they came, so he withdrew. He separated himself from the from the Jewish people, from the non-Jewish people, so from the Gentiles. So, so he says, um, the rest of the Jews also did the same thing. So you see, Peter's action was actually affecting a whole group of people. Um, the rest of the Jews, they were also behaving, you know, like this. And even Barnabas was carried away, Paul says. Uh, even Bar Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. Now, what is the, you know, the word hypocrisy, it means to, uh, you know, to, to say one thing and to do another thing. Okay. Uh, so, it says, you know, they were also carried away uh, by the hypocrisy of uh, Peter. Okay. Uh, so that word there, hypocrisis, okay, which means, um, which actually comes from the, uh, it's, it has got a very interesting, um, you know, uh, background to it. It means uh, the acting of a, uh, how an actor would act on stage. Okay, so that is what it means. Uh, so those days, the actors would actually use, uh, you know, they, in their plays, they would use, um, in, the, in this drama theater, they would use face masks, okay, to be, uh, to portray themselves as a different character, you know, they would use masks. So they were not their actual, they would not show their actual face, but they would actually use a face mask. Or maybe they would put something on their mask to show that they were a different character. So he's using that word, hypocrisis, hypocrisis, meaning um, they were hypocrites, meaning they were not showing their actual face. This is who they were, but they were actually putting on a different face for the sake of the audience. Okay, so hypocrisy is coming like that. You know, it's from that so they were actually someone else on the inside, but they were putting on an uh, act or putting on a different look for the sake of other people, for the sake of the audience, right? So he's saying, even Barnabas was carried away. So what Paul, what Peter was doing affected these Jews, affected Barnabas. So it's affecting a whole lot of people. So Verse 14, he says, they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel. I said to Peter before them all. What did he say? If you being a Jew live like Gentiles, how can you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? Right? See, we've been set free. He goes on to say that, you know, knowing that a man, is just, a man is not justified by the works of the law, which everybody understood which Peter understood, which Barnabas understood, which every man understood, okay? Because they had come to Christ, they had experienced the freedom in Christ. So he's saying, knowing that a man is not justified, a man is not made right with God, uh, or his sins are not taken away by the works of the law. Okay, They had all been people who followed the law, right? So he's saying, a man is not justified by that. A man is not brought to God, or made right with God by the works of the law, by what he kept, by the things that he did. It's not justified by that. Even as we have believed in, uh, sorry, uh, by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. That is the thing. Justification comes by faith in Jesus Christ, in what he did on the cross. Right? So, but by faith in Jesus Christ, even as we have believed in Christ Jesus, that we might be justified by justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. So, so what was Peter doing? What, was, what were the Jews doing? What was Barnabas doing? They were actually going back into the law because the law stated that the Jewish people should not have fellowship with the non-Jewish people, that the Jewish people should not actually 
eat uh, of have you know have that kind of fellowship eat with the non jewish people so these were some traditions uh, jewish uh, traditions right and and so peter was going back to that the people were going back to that so now he's paul is saying you know you know that those things do not achieve anything the justification that you and i have is because of our faith in the lord jesus not by anything else not by keeping this or not keeping that not by doing this or not doing that it's by faith in christ so if while we was 17 if while we seek to be justified christ if we ourselves are found sinners is christ therefore a minister of sin certainly not no what is he talking about you know saying that when we go back to do the works of the law we are actually not acknowledging what christ did for us that right? we are actually rejecting that and we are going back to the law verse 18 if i build again those things which i destroyed i make myself a transgressor so what is he doing he's saying he's saying you know i'm going back to the law in other words i'm saying that i am actually justified only if i do these things which is not the truth right so by my actions i'm saying that i am actually justified i'm made right with god uh only if by these doing these five steps or these six steps or by keeping these things by avoiding these things right so if i do that i'm actually building those things again so if i build those things which i destroyed when i came to faith in christ all these things were destroyed but if i am rebuilding those then i make myself a transgressor of the law of christ i make myself a transgressor for i through the law died to the law okay so so this is what has happened uh through the law i actually died to the law why because if i don't keep the law the penalty of that is death okay the penalty of uh, of that the rightful end is death because um because it's it it means that i am a sinner and as a sinner i'm worthy of death separation eternal separation from god right so i through the law died to the law the law actually condemned me to death okay um but what happened christ took my place he died in my place he took my sin which i could never you know get over by the works of the law he took my sin so he did died in my place so when he died i died when he lived i live so he says that through the law i through the law died to the law i died to it in christ i died that i might live to god verse 20 i have been crucified with christ no when when you could say uh, i died to the law this is why you could say i died to the law why because i have been crucified with christ it is no longer i who live but christ lives in me and the life which i now live in the flesh okay, in the natural the life that i live i live by faith in the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me you know i think this verse is very very familiar right galatians 2:20 i have been crucified with christ so this is what happened you know i died to the law because i was actually crucified with christ when when he died i died we we read that in romans romans chapter 6 when he rose again i rose again so when i rose again i died to the law now i live the natural life that i live in the flesh in this human body i live by faith in the son of god who died for me so i do not set aside the grace of god so now that's another thing you know when i live according to the law when i live according to the rules and traditions um uh, 
what what i'm actually doing i'm actually keeping aside the grace of god so this justification this righteousness came through christ but it came through the grace of god the grace of christ right it did not come as something that is earned it came as something that is not earned that i can just receive freely so i do not set aside the grace of god so probably you know the the jews did not realize that peter did not realize that and you know but this is what happens every time you go back into the law you're actually rejecting the grace of god you know distancing yourself from the grace of god you're setting aside the grace of god so paul is saying you know i do not set aside the grace of god for if righteousness came through the law then christ died in vain now that's another thing now saying you know when you actually go back to the law when you build those things you make yourself a transgressor when you go back to the law when you live when you try to live according to the law in order to be righteous you are actually setting aside the grace of god you know you're distancing yourself from the grace of god which you actually need to live your life now again when you when you go back when you live according to the law when you when you try to do all those things circumcision etc you're actually saying righteousness justification comes through the law in other words you're saying that the lord jesus death on the cross is a waste so paul is saying you know just think about that when you when you do those things you know when you when you when you behave in that manner what you're actually telling is that christ died in vain because righteousness did not come through christ you're saying that righteousness comes through the law therefore i will go back and be circumcised therefore i will go back and live according to the law so what you're saying is that the lord jesus actually died and that death is a waste it's futile empty it's in vain okay so so paul is actually bringing out you know he's opening their eyes to the kind of behavior the kind of life the kind of you know the because they were turning away from christ they were going to another gospel which was not a gospel so paul is saying you know this is what you are actually your actions this is what they mean okay and in chapter 3 we see he says you know o oh, foolish galatians okay so we look at that in the in the next class so we'll we'll stop here okay so we looked at chapter 1 chapter 2 we looked at the background we looked at our, we looked at uh, you know uh, the timeline uh, approximate timeline of when it was written to whom it was written and also uh, you know we we saw uh, paul's own testimony of what happened how he received the gospel what happened to him after that when did he go to jerusalem um, and uh, and also the fact that he checked with the, with the people the, with the leaders um so that he didn't want to minister in in vain he didn't want that to be a waste um and and the other things about the law okay so um yeah next class we looked at we'll look at chapter 3 right okay we'll stop here thank you thank you Thank you so. Right.